episode 11. Are you ready to take your eBay business to the top? Well, if so, buckle up and hold on. It's time once again for So You Want to Sell on eBay with your hosts, Ron LeBeau and Ali Young. Creating an eBay store these days is not that difficult a task. Creating a custom eBay store is. So if you're thinking of starting an eBay business, or even if you're a titanium power seller, let the professional team at AuctionProTemplates.com create a custom eBay store for you. Welcome once again to another episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. I'm Ron LeBeau. And I'm Ali Young. I can't wait to share with you our new guest today, and uh, her name is Michelle Evans. Michelle, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's great you could make it today, Michelle. It's going to be fantastic talking to you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it right. will be. So growing up, Michelle constantly heard the old adage, work hard in school, go to a good college and work hard there, then get a good job and work really hard and you'll find success. The only thing was, she didn't feel successful. Instead, Michelle felt tired, guilty, anxious, burnt out, and like she was surviving life instead of actively embracing and living it. So after more than 16 years building someone else's dreams in corporate America, Michelle decided to take the leap and build her own dreams in business as a coach, helping others escape their jobs as well. So Michelle, I've given our listeners just kind of an overview of you. Uh, please take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about you personally. Oh, personally. So yeah, I worked for 16 years in corporate America in a whole bunch of different um, jobs. And after I had my second child, I just came to this place where I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I need to go out and build my own thing. I'm really wanting a lot more flexibility, a lot more excitement, and a lot more ownership over what I do. That's brilliant. So you actually yeah. saw that. You, you saw that you, you know what, this world, it's just not for me. I want to go out. I want to fulfill my dreams and I want to do this. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I had worked with a coach myself uh, starting in 2008. And um, a lot of times if people haven't worked with a coach before, they're like, what the heck does a coach do? <laughs> <laughs> and there's, you know, like a bazillion different kinds of coaches. Sure. But the specific coach that I worked with was an executive coach. And she really helped me dive into why is, I was having a ton of success in my job. I was always a top performer, a high potential, lots of promotions, lots of bonuses. But I wasn't excited about what I was doing at all. And, and as the years went on, I was just like, oh, I really am not into this. It's like every job I try is not – I succeed, but I hate it. And mm. she helped me realize that I was actually like a closet entrepreneur. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's very cool. So as you know, our listeners are uh, – a lot of people are listening to us now uh, are eBay sellers they're, or they're thinking about starting an eBay business. And a lot of them have jobs, whether it's a corporate job or maybe they're running a fork truck or something or, you know, just a another job that's working for somebody else. So can you tell us what freedom actually feels like? What, 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 is your, what is the difference for you between corporate life and the freedom to do your job? Well, you know, Ron, that's a really good question. I... Uh, I took it in a stepped approach. So I started my side business when I still had my job. So I hustled quite a bit because I worked at Microsoft. So I had a very, very, very full time job. Um, and I had three kids <laughs> and a <laughs> husband and all sorts of things. So I was busy already, but I knew that by putting in a little bit of extra effort, and that might mean getting up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning or perhaps going to bed late at night, if I could put in an hour to an hour and a half of really focused work, I could get myself that much closer to freedom. So to answer your question, I planned for it for a long time. It didn't just happen. Like I didn't just quit and have freedom. But what it looks like now is I have control over when I work and when I don't. I don't have to answer to anybody. I get to decide how much, um, how many clients I want to take on, how much money I want to make. Uh, I get to decide how much time I'm going to allocate to working out, to volunteering at my kids' schools, you know, just to all the things, spending time yeah. with friends. And, you know, what it looks like is tomorrow my daughter and I are going to go get pedicures. We're going to oh. go shopping <laughs> for some new school clothes that she's totally excited about. And we're just going to have a fun day, the two of us. And I can do that because I don't have to worry about my email and a boss. Well, that's fantastic. And that, that's exactly what freedom is, having that, you know, spend time with family and stuff. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned about getting yourself a coach. Um, how did you find your coach? I mean, how did you find out that, 
you know, I need someone to help me along the way here. And, and, and how did you find exactly where they were? Well, Ali, that's a good question. I actually had never really heard about coaching in this sense. Mm -hmm. um, until I made it into the high potential program at Microsoft. And so I actually was given a coach. And uh, once I discovered what she was all about, I was like, okay, we're I'm gonna really make use of this. And so <laughs> it was a company that was contracted through Microsoft. And so I got to select from a whole slew of coaches there, but I found oh, wow. one who I really, really liked. And um and she was supposed to help me with career planning, but instead we turned it on our head, on the head and said, all right, yep. how do I figure out a different career for myself? Very That's nice. And she, she, and she just guides you along the process. Does she, she sort of sees you, she sees what you want to do and sort of just puts you in the right direction, does she? Well, no, not necessarily. She actually uh, was much, she helped me be really um, self-reflective. So, you know, a lot of times we we might be unhappy. We know that we're unhappy. We're waking up in the morning. We're hitting the snooze bar. We're not super stoked about getting to work in the morning. Our days seem to be kind of long and running together. Like there's no spark and enthusiasm and excitement. And, uh, you know, some people might feel kind of sick to their stomach maybe on a Sunday night. Mm. Um, you know, there's all these things that come up. And what my coach would do is say, all right, so you – felt really sick to your stomach for the last five Sunday nights in a row. What's that all about? And she would make me dive really deep. She would call it peeling back the onion. And she, we would oh, just yeah. keep asking, and why is that? And what's behind that? And why is that? And we would get into my values, which are kind of squishy, but they actually help us run programs within ourselves that we may not even know are there. Uh, as far as like belief systems that we have. So, you know, one of my belief systems is I had to work hard, like work yep. had to be hard. And I didn't even realize that that was a belief system that I had until I really worked with this coach. And it took a couple of years for me to come to that realization. But by thinking that work had to be hard, then I almost unconsciously made it hard. Like wow, I would yeah. make myself available all the time. And so my work was 24 seven, you know? Yeah, exactly. And well, that actually leads us to the sort of next question. And we always like to ask about a sort of impact person, someone that sort of helped you like that, like that person there sort of helped you along your way and sort of guided you and gave you advice. And it might even be this person that is your impact person, but is there someone else in your life that sort of encouraged you to carry on living that dream? You know, I'm going to take it in a different way. So I did have an impact person. Um, after I had my son, I worked until about two o'clock in the afternoon, the day that I went into labor with my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was about two weeks before the end of the fiscal year at Microsoft. And so I was trying to get everything done before I left. And I won this huge award. I was the MVP for global marketing at Microsoft. And nice. I went in, I went in and I had lunch with the um, CMO and then I went and had my review with my boss and my boss was the impact person because he said, you know what, you're going to get this top review this year, but next year, because you're on maternity leave, the maximum you're going to get is middle of the road. What? <laughs> and for me, it, that's actually illegal in the U.S. And, and he wasn't doing it, he wasn't doing it in a mean spirited way. He was just being totally frank with me. He's like, Hey, here's, here's the state of the business we're in. If you're out, you're not going to be top of the heap. And the reason why I call him my impact person is because I had been thinking about making a jump, opening my business, really going full force at it. For years, from 2008 to this happened in, from February of 2008, and this happened in August of 2011. So for that entire time, I had been thinking about, like, doing all these perfectionist things behind the scenes, the right business name, the right website, like, all yeah, this stuff, yeah. right? But I had done nothing. <laughs> I had been thinking <laughs> about, thinking about, maybe someday, maybe doing this. And when I had that review and it made me so angry. Like I was just so mad. I was like, I don't want anyone else to own <laughs> my life. Like you don't yeah. get to tell me what I'm worth just because I'm taking some time off with my baby. Mm. And I, I went home that night and opened my business. Wow. That's, Beautiful. that's amazing. 
Yeah. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, it sounds to me like your boss, as your impact person, and sometimes we ask the question this way, whether the impact person is positive or negative, because that's a prime example of how a negative situation uh, turned into a very positive for you. You you took that negative situation. And he actually did you a favor, right? Absolutely. And we're friends to this day. He, it was not mean-spirited at all, but it really, in that moment, um, got me off of my seat, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Into the game. Well, exactly. And, and the fact that, you know, he was so honest with you, he could have kept that to himself. But, you know, opening that up to you, uh, whether he should have done that, whether it was company policy or not, I don't know. But the, the fact that he opened that up to you and gave you that information uh, didn't lead you into, you know, false expectations for the next the next year. Well, and you know what? I had been so comfortable with, uh, you know, sometimes people call it golden handcuffs, but I was getting huge bonuses, huge stock, you know, all these things. And it was really comfortable to stay there and think about, you know, someday maybe I'll do this. This yeah. gave me a reason to get off my butt and make it happen. That, and you took that action as well. Yeah, I did. I didn't realize everything that was into <laughs> it. <laughs> right. That's, you know, more of the story. But yes, yep. I took that action and... Uh, I took about seven months to really get my business lined up and get clients lined up before I left my job. Very cool. Very cool. So let's talk a little bit about a failure. Uh, as you know, our listeners are, are sitting there and trying to figure out how someone that's successful like yourself uh, gets to a point and they have a failure. And how do you overcome that? So if you would for us, uh, just tell us of a failure that you've had in your uh, your business and what did you do to overcome that failure? Yeah, you know, actually, I don't think that you can have a business without having failures. So I'm happy to share some of mine. Um, maybe about a year and a half ago or so, it might have been longer, but I launched this product that I thought was going to be, you know, the be all end all. Like this is what was going to be my product that I could build my business on and I could start having all this income coming in with not a lot of effort going out, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dreamer. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Um, yeah, I think that I needed to take this step to show myself how much I still had to learn. Um, but I created this program called Career Success Roadmap. It's not up anymore. Nobody can, you can't go buy it. But um, it was based on the coaching program that I was doing with people about how to find better careers for themselves. And my one-on-one -on -one coaching was going awesome. My uh, group coaching, like when I would go in and do like a workshop or something, that was going awesome. So I built this course off of that. But I didn't have a great launch strategy. I didn't have a great list. I didn't have great Facebook engagement or, you know, social media engagement. So I pretty much built this with the, uh, you know, build it and they will come sort of hope and pray strategy. Right, because it happens in Hollywood, so it has to be true, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm so brilliant, so everybody should just come flocking to me, right? Yeah, I have that every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen and then at I all. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what? Because um, I did uh, marketing for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, for 16 years, I led marketing for various companies. And um, I thought I knew a lot about it. But marketing for a company is really different than marketing yourself. And getting over, putting yourself out there, being vulnerable, being seen, having people criticize you, all that stuff. I was really hiding a lot. And that's why I didn't, that's why I had the, you know, build it and pray sort of strategy mm -hmm. because yep. I was afraid of people saying, you know, this is horrible or this is stupid or whatever. And so I was hiding. So I sort of built it, but then sort of hid it. Um, yep. And it was a real wake up call for me as far as, all right. Am I really committed to this game? Am I ready to jump in, make myself vulnerable and seen, and let people criticize me, but also serve the people that I'm supposed to serve? And so, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. It took me about four months to pick myself back up because I just felt like, oh, my gosh, I just totally bombed that one. <laughs> and And I had to go through this real, you know, like pick myself up by the bootstraps and say, all right, do I want this or do I want to go back and get a job? And the answer was, I do not want to go back and get a job, so I need no. to figure this out. Amen. Yeah. And you know what I love about it? And you're not the first guest to say this. You know, you, It's that point there where you could quit. You could yep. say, you know what? I just can't do this. I'm not built for this. Ah, I'm going to have to go back to the corporate world. But you didn't. You thought, you know what? I'm going to make this better. How can I make this better? And look at the result from it, from that one point, turning it, and, and look at you now, you know? 
You're getting yeah. a pedicure tomorrow. I mean, seriously. I mean, yeah, how, life gets terrible, you, isn't it? Before, you would have had to ask your boss if you could take the day <laughs> off or maybe, I don't know, maybe with a phone call, cough a couple times and play dead or something. I don't know. And, and now, you, you know, you have the option. You know, you have the choice. What an amazing thing. Yeah, absolutely. And not only would I have had to ask for the day off, but I would have had my phone with me the whole time, uh, you know, going through email and trying absolutely. to hit a fire drill. So I don't have to do that anymore. That's good for the listeners who are, you know, are listening out there that who believe that they can't do what you're doing, that anything is possible. You know, you just got to, I've had enough of this. I just want to move on. I want to try something new, get past that fear that we always talk about and boom, and just, just do it. You've got no, nothing yeah. to lose, have you? I do say this, though. We're not promoting any everybody to go into work tomorrow and tell their boss they quit. Now, you know, as you can hear, Michelle had a plan, right? You have to have a plan in place. You can't just go in tomorrow and tell your boss you're done and you're out of here. So, but yeah. I, you know, and some people preach that, but I think that that just puts you, I think that that just reconfirms your fear. Because right. there are very few people who have one or two years worth of savings that they can just live off of. I, I really believe in building something on the side and working out those kinks and making sure you really like it before you jump into it full force. I totally yeah. agree. I totally agree yeah. because, you know, you have to have peace of mind. And if, you'd, if, if I were to go into a job and, and just quit tomorrow, you know, the stress of pressure of, you know, where the income, where the income's coming in and all that is in addition to trying to build a business, something I haven't done yet. So like Michelle's saying, build a business side by side, whether it's eBay or whatever, build it side by side, watch the eBay thing grow. And then once you get to a point where you're comfortable, where you've at least matched your income, now you have options. Now you have options. Use your corporate job or your job in the factory or wherever it's at Use that job to help you build and be the catalyst to get you to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you learn how to build a business, you'll find that you're even more successful at your job because you're able to really, really narrow in on what yeah. is most critically important for you to do and leave a lot of the fluff that isn't so important. Yeah. I know that happened for me. That's yeah, great and information. It is great information. Well, let's turn it now then. Okay, to me, I like those failures, and I, I personally actually see them as successes sometimes, and especially the one you just mentioned. But do you have a success, something that there was a point in time where, yes, this is actually working, I can see this, or you know, a real successful moment for you? Did, did you have one of those? Yeah, so it was actually as I was pulling myself up by those bootstraps. Part mm -hmm. of how I came out of that is I started surveying my list and, and also people around me and saying, all right, this isn't what you wanted to learn from me. What is it that you want to learn from me? Mm. And my secret dream that I just hadn't believed that I was good enough to do yet was actually to teach people how to create their own businesses instead of coach them to get a better job. As the survey results started coming in, and I was reading person after person saying, you know, I like hearing about the career stuff. It's interesting. But what I really want to know is, how did you leave your job? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was just like these, I mean, I just felt like the heavens were opening up and light was shining down <laughs> and angels were singing. I was like, oh my gosh, they want to hear what I really want to teach. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great, it has to be a great feeling, Michelle. And you know, I, I can just tell by your voice and your personality that you're, you're, you're an awesome coach. And uh, the people that are, are under you and they're being mentored by you are just benefiting from all you do. So uh, that's a great thing you've got going on there. Thank you. Yeah, I really love it. And I mean, it wasn't an overnight success. This was kind of like success in steps, but it led me to start my own podcast. And that led me to, you know, meeting a lot of different people and just opening a lot of doors. So I guess just um, going through the uncomfortable, going through the grunt, the, oh, okay, that didn't work. Now what? And just pushing on through um, is worth it because on the other side, you never know what's going to be waiting. Okay, well, cool. So we've talked about a failure. We've talked about success. Let's talk about your business now. What's it doing? What do you have going on? Any future plans? Any things that you've got going on that you're just like really excited about that you'd like to share with us? Yeah. So one of the things that I'm really excited about is uh, this group that I've started that's called the Breaking Free Tribe. And the tribe, um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it was a game changer when I started connecting with people who were building businesses online. I, you know, I was raised through the school system and even I went to business school and I thought I was going to learn about starting a business, but I learned how to get a job. Yeah. I was surrounded yeah. by employees 
And so as I started going down this path and really feeling like, okay, this could be it for me, I I looked around at everybody around me and I thought, I have no one to talk to about this. I have no one to brainstorm with on this. I have nobody to bounce ideas off of. And so, you know, I went out and I found masterminds and I joined uh, different groups and stuff where I could connect with people. But that, you know, some of those are really expensive. They are really expensive. And, you know, I, I don't know which mastermind you, you uh, joined, but, you know, there's a lot of great value in those masterminds. But, man, sometimes on a, you know, on a shoestring bug- budget, it's really hard to put the money together and then, you know, and really focus that, you know, this money is going to pay off someday, right? Yeah, because we're talking, I mean, just to give your listeners numbers, fifteen, eighteen, twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 plus travel. Wow. Uh, to be a part of that for, you know, nine to 12 months. So, yeah, they're not cheap. And so, wh- but what I really needed when I just first got started, especially when I was in that seven month time frame between starting my business and leaving my job, I just wanted like a community of people I could go to and say, what the heck is an autoresponder? Yeah. Or, you know, I, who uses WordPress and why do you use that? You know, I just had these really. Um, basic for me now, but at that time they seemed overwhelming and insurmountable questions just to just to get going. And so I spent a lot of time spinning my wheels learning this stuff that I knew that lots of people knew already, but I didn't know how to connect with them. Yeah. And so I started the tribe as a way for people who are thinking about creating a business or maybe have taken baby steps to create it and just want a place where they can go to to connect with me as a mentor and with the rest of the people in the tribe to ask those questions. And then I do some training and group calls and stuff there too. um, I've actually found um, that these brainstorming sessions are very important. I mean, you're talking about the expenses and stuff, but there is a, you know, get a group of people together, whether it's on a forum or something, and just knocking out ideas to to sort of make things work. Because like you say, WordPress and all of that, when you're first starting out, it's so, it's so confusing. You know, how do I... How do I save a link or how do I do something basic? And you need to be able to go to people like that and talk to them. Yeah, and say, do I really need this $500 template or is this $30 template okay? Like, you know, there's just some real basic questions. And a lot of the masterminds actually won't let you in until you're at a certain point in your business. So you have to apply. And so there's sort of this... Um, zero to, you know, whatever state, mastermind ready stage where you're kind of floundering around trying to find, all right, <laughs> yeah. how do I connect with people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, I tell you, you know, the, the tribe thing sounds like a great idea because, you know, like any community, uh, if you if you only had people that were technical, that would not be successful, right? I mean, if you have to, technical people and you have people that can write, then maybe there's some exchange going on here and said, yeah, you know, guy says, uh, I'll build your website if you write some articles for me and you can kind of swap. And I know I did that for myself and uh, and it's helped uh, build our business. Absolutely. And you because uh, I don't know about you, but the people that I do that kind of stuff with, like we become friends for life almost. We're, you know, we're, yeah. we're sort of more deeply connected You've got something, yeah, at a greater level. So is there any future projects, anything that you sort of see yourself in a few years' time down the road doing? I mean, I know you've mentioned some already. Yeah, well, of course, I'll keep doing one-on-one coaching. I love that. But I but I don't have I, – I can't take tons and tons of clients because there's only so much of me. So a future, <laughs> a future project that I would like to do are masterminds, like the, the higher-level ones for the people ready to go. But I also yep. will take another stab at doing a course – but this one's going to be about how to start a business versus how to get a better career. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> yeah, that's experience you've learned there, isn't it? So. Yes. And I'll test it out first before yeah. I go <laughs> Otherwise you're forth. back at the beginning again. <laughs> hey. So I've learned quite a bit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you right. go. It's now time for the lightning round. But before we do, let's thank our sponsors. If you are an online merchant, chances are you've heard of therapy. Therapy helps online merchants like you by providing in-depth analytics to help you pull back the curtain on your competitor's behavior, pricing techniques and strategies, supply and demand, category and product trends, and customer purchase patterns. Sound intense? It is. Therapy is the leader in e-commerce market analysis dedicated to helping online merchants grow their business and become more profitable. How cool would it be if you could know the new and emerging opportunities? Terapeak delivers market intelligence that is both meaningful and actionable. 
Terrapeak analyzes over 2.4 billion transactions per year. How many of those will be yours next year? After all, if your competitors see the value in Terrapeak, shouldn't you? Go to www.soyouwantosellonebay.com forward slash Terrapeak to sign up today. Dylan, this is where we're going to ask you some questions and you can answer them as quickly or as elaborately as you care to. Are you ready for that? Yes. All right, let's do that. What was your biggest fear of starting a business? Failing and having to go back and get another job. And how did you get past that fear then? Well, I lined up so many clients before I left uh, my job that I had already replaced my income. So I figured I could at least ride that for a while. And then I just have to get out there and hustle. I actually took on too much business when I first started yeah. because I was afraid of that. <laughs> I like that hustle. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Hustle, hustle, so what, hustle. <laughs> yeah, hustle away. Yeah. What, what's one piece of advice you could give someone just starting out in a business that they could benefit from, really? You know, I think we already talked about it a bit, but really start it on the side. Carve out mm. a little time. I mean, even if it's only 30 minutes every weekday, if it's 30 focused minutes, you can make a huge amount of progress in 12 months time, but start it out on the side. Don't try to jump in full force because you're not going to replace your income immediately. It might be, you know, four, six, eight months down the road before you really get the kinks worked out of your sales system. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's really a get rich slow scheme. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, well, yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, so if you had the chance to start all over, Michelle, with uh, the knowledge you have now of running a business and doing all the things that you know how to do, what one thing would you do differently? Um, I wouldn't waste thousands and thousands of dollars trying to have a really fancy website that never saw the light of day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. I would uh, go simple and grow into what I envisioned. Start small sort of thing. Yep. Yeah, that's a great lesson to learn. Um, many people have done that, myself included. You think that you need all this fancy stuff and you soon find out the simple stuff works. Yeah, absolutely. And and honestly, people want to connect with you as a person and not with a giant faceless corporation. Yeah, Definitely. That's very true. So when you started your first business, um, how much confidence did you have that you would actually make any money from it? Well, so my first, so when I first went out into business, I actually had two. I had my consulting that I lined up, and then I had my coaching that I was building. I had a ton of faith in my consulting because people were basically hiring me to do what they already knew that I could do. Um, okay. And I had all the clients lined up before I left my job, so I had replaced my income. So I knew I could do that. The coaching piece, which is what I really wanted to do, I did not have as much faith in. I didn't have as much faith in myself of being able to do it, and I didn't have faith in being able to attract people. So that took a little bit longer to get into. Great, yeah. great. So what kind of research are you able to do? I mean, was there some kind of research that you did when you were in your corporate world where you were still running your side-by-side -side business and you know, just to kind of make sure that uh, it was going to be profitable? Yeah, well, so the consulting was, you know, we'll just put that to the side. That was, I was just talking to people in my network and said, hey, are you going to have any work for me? And they said, yes. So that was, that was on the side. But on the coaching side, I would go out and literally look at anybody that I could find who was doing something in the realm of what I wanted to do. And I just tried to figure out how I would be different or what was interesting to me. I was trying to figure out what's my business model going to be? How am I going to, you know, talk to people? And that just took a while to figure out. And it also took a lot of trial and error. I don't, I think you cannot think this through. You have to try, learn, try, learn. Like it's just this constant wheel of, all right, I think this is going to be it. Oh, that wasn't quite it. But, you know, <laughs> yes. like you, you just have to be willing to go through that because you can, you will not be perfect straight out of the gate. Uh, like the one hit wonder or the overnight success. It won't happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a common message actually we get on this show is you know that determination, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, and then boom, it it, it suddenly works. So to maintain all this, these all these businesses and empires that you have, do you do you use any special tools? Do you? I mean, how do you manage your time or stuff like that? Uh, well, I'm. How do I manage my time? I have um, at the beginning of the year, I have my business focuses laid out for here's what I want to accomplish this year. 
And here's, you know, the few categories that I'm really going to focus on. And I'm really um, hardcore about keeping it to just a few. And then I, each month, at the beginning of each month, I set goals. And then I just check in with myself weekly. So that's how I keep myself on track as far as moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe in creating a 12-month plan because that doesn't give me a lot of room for trying and learning and, you know, changing in the moment. Yeah, it makes but sense. I, yeah, but I do know what I want to get to. Like, I know the, how many clients I want to get for one-on-one. I know how many people I want to get into the tribe. Like, I know how many listeners I want to get on my podcast. So I, then within that, I just have to figure out what works. And so just making sure that the first two hours of my day are 100% focused on doing something that is revenue generating or lead generating for my business before I get sucked into all the other things that can seem really important, but aren't. So it's not really a tool so much as just discipline and focus, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And, um, and as far as like tool tools, um, you know, I, where I use WordPress, I use lead pages, like those are probably the things that and go to webinar. Those are the things that I use the most and I love in my business. And are you a pen and paper person? Uh, no, I'm an Evernote person. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of Evernotes all over the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, nice. Well, that's the end of the lightning round, and it's actually sadly time to say goodbye. Um, we'd like to thank our special guest for coming to take the time to join us today, Michelle Evans. We're very honored to have you. I'll tell you what, I like the way you talked about um, doing something for your business sort of every day, whether it's half an hour, you know, just invest a bit of time on your new business every day. And it's been an honor to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. We really appreciate it. And if you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on our show, check the Ask the Experts section on our website. We'll post all the notes from today's interview on our show notes page, which can be found at www.soyouwannaselloneBay.com forward slash show notes forward slash Michelle Evans. But before you go, Michelle, please tell our listeners out there, how can they contact you? What's the best way of communicating with you? Um, probably on my website, MichelleLEvans.com. I have a contact form there. Okay, or that's Facebook. great. <laughs> Facebook, everyone's on yeah. Facebook. Well, we'll make sure we put all those links on the show notes page so people can find them easy enough. Well, thanks for all the information, and we wish you continued success there, Michelle. From everyone here at So You Want to Sell on eBay, I'm Ali Young. And I'm Ron LeBeau. Well, that's a wrap to another awesome show. Don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes at So You Want to Sell on eBay.com forward slash iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Your eBay Podcast and Facebook at So You Want to Sell on eBay. And we can always be found at www.soyouwantosellonebay.com. So you're wondering how you can grow your business, yet your website is currently being hosted by one of those website in a box sites, or maybe you don't have a website. Well, if you're really serious about growing your business, then maybe it's time to get serious about who is hosting your website. Bluehost is your answer. At Bluehost, you get complete hosting solutions for as little as $4.95 per month. And while that is inexpensive, it certainly is not cheap. You get unlimited domain hosting, unlimited space, unlimited bandwidth, and much more. Bluehost has the top-rated 24-7 support team of real experts ready to offer real solutions and advice. And if that weren't enough, at Bluehost, you will never sign a contract. Go to www.soyouwantosellonebay.com forward slash Bluehost today and take your business to a whole new level.